Hello and welcome back to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. Continuing on with my Essential 3.0 64-bit edition, this is my second tutorial on the initial configuration of Zential, which is Zential 3.0 is based upon the Ubuntu 12.4 server edition LTS. We had just left off where we had just rebooted our installation and now it's uh, installing Zential core packages. Once this is done, we should go right into the desktop and we can start our initial configuration. So this should only take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video as this proceeds. Okay, I'm back. The core packages have now been installed and we can proceed with the initial configuration. So let's open up a terminal and let's create a super user, a root user. So we're going to type in the sudo command and passwd and the word root. And now type in your administrative password we had set up. And now we're going to apply the root password. So go ahead and create a password for your root user. And that is it. Now we're going to elevate our status to root user status. So type in SU for super user. Press enter and the password you just created, go ahead and type it in. Alright, now we're in as root. I would like to install a few packages. So we're going to run the apt apt get install command, a very popular command in Ubuntu. And we're going to install Synaptic. That is the Synaptic Packet Manager. It's a wonderful packet manager allowing you to uh, find, fetch, and install software through a graphical interface. Very nice to have. This should only take a few more seconds. There we go. You can hit the up arrow key and change Synaptic to XRDP. This is a great service that runs in the background, a remote desktop service. So from your window PCs, you can just run the, uh, the MSTSC command, the remote desktop command, and remote into your servers anytime you like. Makes it great for administrating your server environment. Next, we're going to install G Debbie. Great packet manager. If you ever get a package you download called a uh, .deb, you know the name of the package with .deb is the file extension. You need to open it with something and you don't want to use command line. You can open it with the GW. It's great. So we'll add that. And we'll add Gparted. Great hard drive management tool for checking the status of your hard drives, uh, setting up partitions, things like that. So let's exit out of this and exit again. Let's go ahead and log into the uh, administrative dashboard here. D user. The interface has changed a little bit. Zential did a wonderful job on this. Made it very user friendly. So you can follow me as I click along and choose packages I'm going to install. Of course, you know, choose it to your business needs. Or if you're doing like me here and you're just using like a virtual box or a VMware, you can just experiment with these different packages. I think at this time for this tutorial, I'm not going to cover the cloud client or captive portal or firewall. I think we have a fine selection here. We'll proceed with that. Go install. It might add a few packages that it needs, like firewall, but that's fine. We just won't be configuring it at this time. And then OK. And while this is installing, you know, I'm going to pause the video. But if you are running the installation alongside of mine, now you can watch this uh, really nice slideshow Zenchel has put together, telling you of all the great features and services that they have to offer. Like I said a moment ago, they did a really 
wonderful job on this interface. Very user friendly. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. Now we have to configure our network interfaces. I do have, like I mentioned earlier in a previous tutorial, I do have two network interfaces set up. My logic behind that is one's going to handle my, my internet traffic, websites, email, things like that, and then keep a degree of separation with the internal network for the local DNS, DHCP, and file sharing. So Ethernet 0 will be external, Ethernet 1 will be internal. Pretty simple. Next, I have to set up a couple IP addresses. Now, these IP addresses are local, non-internet routable IP addresses. I have my routable IP addresses applied to my routers. So I am going to be pointing my router, the one that handles my internet traffic, to this IP address. So whatever ports on the internet that you're going to utilize, such as uh, port 443, port 80, 465, 25, all the different uh, ports, you would point them towards Ethernet 0 and this IP address. That's the way it will handle your traffic. Go ahead and put your gateway in, which is normally your router IP address. You can put your uh, DNS server name in there if you have a DNS server or if you have a DNS information provided to you by your ISP or if you applied your DNS information to your router you can just put your router IP address in there that way it will forward it to your router and your router will forward it out to the internet that should work fine now for the internal I like to keep the subnets a little bit different degree of separation make sure you check your net mask and once you're comfortable with your configuration, we can go ahead and click on Next. Next, select the domain name of the server. And I'll call mine test.lan. Keeps the uh, and not routable, so you won't have any DNS issues as far as your internet name. You can also call it dot .local. Once again, it comes down to your personal preferences. And now we're going to configure the email. Let's just call this rtest.lan. Now normally you would put in your fully qualified name, the one you registered with your registrar. Like in my case it would be the Jonas.net. But for this uh, video I'm just going to keep it something very simple internal. But that's where you would put your uh, domain name that you're going to use on the internet, or your internet presence. And we'll click on finish and give it a chance to apply this configuration. And while this is taking place, I will pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Installation finished, congratulations. Go to the dashboard. Well, first I'm gonna to go to module status. I'm gonna check the uh, DHCP. And once that is complete. I'm going to uncheck firewall. And that's fine. We'll save changes. Excellent. This new interface is very nice and very fast. So next we're going to go to system in general. And under general configuration, you have lots of options, change administrative passwords, set your time zones. What I'm going to focus in on here is the port that this administrative page is listening on. 443, well, I can't have that because 443 is going to be utilized by the webmail and by the active sync process. So I'm going to have to change the port. I'm going to, I'll change it to 444. You can change it to whatever ports available on your network. And we'll save changes. 
And of course, while this is applying, I'm going to lose my connection because I'm not on port 444. So that's easily fixed. Four four four, and of course you get the the SSL security prompt. We can just click past that, and there we go. And I can close this page out. And as you can see, we're on the correct port. Speaking of uh, certificates, we can go ahead and create a certificate. Go under Certificate Authority under General. Now these are self-signed certificates. You can, you can have, you can create your own uh, certificates uh, through the different certificate authorities. You can find good deals on my, good deals on the internet for those. Uh, I like to use self-signed certificates for this type of environment. Self-signed certificates, in my opinion, are just as safe, but they're not automatically trusted by the web browser because you've made them, they weren't made by one of the large companies that do provide great services as far as certificate uh, creation. But once again, that costs money. Now, if you run an e-commerce site, things like that, well, definitely want a trusted certificate so your browser doesn't give you any kind of prompts when you go to the web page. But for a company web mail or devices that connect to your uh, mail server, I feel that a self-signed certificate is fine. Here you can apply your internet presence, your name, like in my case it would be the Jonas.net. But for us, we're just going to call it rtest.land. And you can put in your country code, city, state, the amount of days the certificate will be good for, and create. And once again, if you want to add a secondary name to the certificate, you can do that. A lot of times it's an internal name for internal applications. Like this is server 01, server 01, uh, our test.lan. They give you an example right here you can follow. It's kind of nice having two names on one certificate. And we click issue, and then we just save changes. And I'll have to refresh this page here in a few minutes because what we're going to do next is we're going to apply the certificate. These are all the different services that are going to use digital certificate. So let's enable the certificate we just created and all these services. If you don't have to, that's something I like to do. Now like I said in a minute ago I'm going to have to refresh this page because my certificate is different. I'm going to have to pick up the new certificate. So we'll give this a minute to catch up. And let's just do a reload. Not quite there yet. There we go. And let's just take a quick peek at the certificate we just made. And as you can see, it has our name on test.lan. We will confirm it and accept it. Next, let's go down to the web server. And enable SSL port. You know, prior to me changing the port on this dashboard, this would not be possible. We would get an error. But now that port 443 is available, we can click on change and save changes. And that's pretty much it for my tutorial on the initial configuration of Zential 3.0. Please watch my next tutorial, uh, tutorial number three, and that'll be on configuring your DNS and DHCP. So thank you for taking time for watching my tutorial, and have a nice day.